uh, an equitable world for all. The sector uh, follows the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which was brought out by the United Nations um, and really sets out a strategy and a pathway for organizations, for countries, for individuals to aspire and bring about um, equitable opportunities, uh, ending and eradicating poverty's, poverty and helping meet um, the goals for all people. Uh, International Development Week uh, is celebrated in Canada. Uh, it was brought out by uh, the government of it was brought out by the government of Canada to showcase the work that uh, Canadians are doing in helping meet these SDGs uh, within Canada, but especially around the world. So next slide, Tiffany. And uh, you know, sorry, I, I'm I'm uh, speaking from Bhutan, and it's quite late. And I apologize. This background noise is is my dog who suddenly decided that instead of sleeping, she she wants to go out. So <laughs> so apologies for this background scratching and noise and maybe barking that you'll hear shortly. Um, so anyway, so we're you're here today to learn more about um, how Humber is working on the sustainable development goals across the world. Our work really focuses on uh, goal uh, four, which is quality education. Uh, so access to education, quality higher education, but also goal uh, eight, which is access to employment, as well as uh, cross-cutting across the 17 goals, which you'll hear from, uh, from the team uh, in you know, over the next slides. So the IDI is situated within the international uh, office at Humber. Uh, we are a center of excellence that focuses on international development. We're a non-academic unit and we work across the, the faculties, the non-teaching departments, and we engage faculty, staff, and students on international development activities and projects uh, globally. So all our funding comes from internal so external sources. So these are donors and funders, uh, primarily the government of, Canada, government of Canada, so the federal government, but we also receive uh, individual donations as well. Um, and then as you go across the different projects, they'll explain how the funding uh, comes through. And the work takes different forms. So we have uh, projects, uh, we have also applied research, we do community, local community engagement or internationalization at home, such as the IDW. Uh, we involve a lot of students through work integrated learning. Um, and we have a customized training where we get uh, requests uh, to do, you know, sort of short term projects as well. Um, and that's also this. So this spans the work that we are involved in. Um, so over the next uh, 45 minutes, you'll hear from uh, from my colleagues who will tell you more about the work that we're doing in different countries. Um, and I hope this is uh, this, you know, if it's of interest to you, I hope that you will reach out uh, to learn more about our work and uh, and possibly get engaged. So whether you're a faculty, staff and student, there's always opportunities to get involved. Uh, and I hope that you will reach out to us and and uh, we will look forward to working with you. So on that, I'll hand it over to Tiffany. Thank you, Nalini. All right, okay. So for today, our event speakers are the IDI team members. We have a group of project managers, project leads, and specialists and interns. Um, each of them will have a few minutes to share about their projects, experiences, and how they are advancing the sustainable development goals uh, through their work. So the first person we have is Clarice, who will share about her project STEM Education for Empowerment project. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Clarice. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm the project lead for the STEM Education for Empowerment project, also known as STEEP. STEEP is a four-year initiative led by Humber College through the International Development Institute and funded by the Government of Canada through Global Affairs Canada and the Barrett Family Foundation. Uh, the project will be implemented through a triangular partnership with our partners, uh, CAP Youth Empowerment Institute Kenya, a youth skills training nonprofit organization based in Nairobi, Kenya, and Hahu Jobs, an IT company providing technical solutions based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Steve aims to equip adolescent girls aged 14 to 18 from low income and vulnerable communities in Kenya and Ethiopia with the interest, skills, and confidence to pursue studies and employment in STEM. The project approach will implement gender responsive 
STEM education and empowerment training to break inequitable cycles that perpetuate gender imbalances in schools and employment. And so SEEP will be delivered through two streams, adolescent girls in secondary schools and adolescent girls out of school. SEEP will take a multi-level and multi-stakeholder approach to address barriers faced by adolescent girls in STEM education employment through delivering training in through in-person and digital methods that include STEM technical skills, life skills, entrepreneurship skills, mentorship, and work readiness skills that are appropriate and relevant to the local context. Uh, by providing adolescent girls with STEM industry mentorship, exposure opportunities, and improving the enabling environment for adolescent girls education and employment by working with gatekeepers such as parents, adolescent boys, male youth, local educators, administrators to address harmful social norms and systemic barriers to really make sure that they have a supportive and enabling environment um, to learn in and also to work in in the future. Throughout the design of STEEP, one of the key goal or key guiding principles and framework we had in mind is of course the sustainable development goals. STEEP deliverables contribute to a number of SDGs, including SDG number four, which is quality education, which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. Under this particular SDG, target 4.5 talks about eliminating gender disparities in education and ensuring equal access to all levels of education and vocational training for the vulnerable, including girls and children in vulnerable situations. So SEEP is one of the many initiatives that we are working on to contribute towards this target. Um, and while SEEP is in its initial stages, we are looking forward to sharing more as we move forward through implementation and share opportunities for further engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Clarice. If anybody has any questions for Clarice or any of the speakers later on as well, please drop them in the chat. And if you want to know more about SEEP, please read the Humber Today article or watch the YouTube video, which we will also drop in the chat. Thank you again, please. Uh, next up, we have Anna, who will share about the breastfeeding facility developed at Sigala Gala National Polytechnic in Kenya under the Kenya um, Education for Employment Program project. Thank you, Tate. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anna Garcia. I'm a project leader in the International Development Institute, but I'm so proud and I'm happy to share with you about this project because when I started at an IDI as an intern, I started collaborating within this project. And I think this project is the best example of what we as project manager we have to deal with, the constant change in the project, but in a good way. So this was a five-year project. It ended up last year uh, in March 2022, and it have amazing achievements. Uh, within the project, uh, we have three partners in Kenya, and we'll be able to provide equipment to bring the program they're developing up to speed and industry 4.0 skills. Uh, also, we train the teachers, but also establish uh, teaching and learning centers for them to be able to continue with the uh, training and, and creating capacities within their communities. We established a gender committee, an environmental club, and an industrial advisory committee for each one of the programs uh, at the institutions. We had also three applied research projects at the National Polytechnics, and we will be able to work with them to launch these different courses at the Polytechnic Institutions in Kenya, uh, in solar photovoltaic program, uh, industrial plan operations, and building out these programs. Uh, also, uh, we, as you can do the math, we were, be, if we finish in 2022, and we were five years back, we, uh, we, we have some of the implementation of the project during the pandemic, which was uh, very challenging, but it's really rewarding, but because we, considering the, uh, the strong partnership that we have with our partners in Kenya, we will be able to conduct some of the activities uh, virtually, but also keep the engagement of the activities. And um, at the end, as, and I was mentioning, uh, change is all part of the project. This picture that you're seeing, there is a really recent picture and something that makes us so proud because as part of the project, as part of the gender committee that was created a part of a, in the project, um, one day 
when the lockdown was over, the lead of the gender committee of the Sigala Gala National Polytechnic come to, to us saying that there was uh, an important number of students who came back pregnant or with baby and in high risk of dropping out school. So uh, we do the consultation with the partners, the founders, uh, we will be able to create a breastfeeding facility, which is the first breastfeeding facility in a technical education in Kenya. It's a pilot that uh, as is right now is already changing lives. We have a this point uh, over the started operation in September and we have over 40 students using it, ensuring that those students are able to continue with their training, complete their training and finally get um, the education they need to. As part as the uh, the project when it ended and considering the strong relationship that we have with our partners, now we are conducting our applied research project that is helping us to determine which is the real impact of this facility. And so we just just finished the, uh, the first data collection that has shown that so many students, most of them have said that if it wasn't for the breastfeeding facility, they wouldn't be able to complete their training. Or even those who were able to complete it wouldn't have the enough time to study and to keep a balance between being a mom and also a female trainee in a Tibet institution. So now uh, this is one of uh, the projects that I feel more proud of. Uh, and uh, even uh, here presenting something that the credit is from someone else and is someone that I want to acknowledge because I told him before that uh, having this breastfeeding facility in this amazing project was thanks to the work of so many people but the leadership of Jorge Montoya who is here but I want to give a, a great shout out because we are touching so many people's life and making a sustainable and a positive impact in so many communities. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Um, if you want to keep up to date with any of the activities um, regarding the breastfeeding facility, please follow our social media where we do post a lot of it. Again, thank you very much, Anna. Um, next up, we have Jorge, who, who will share about the Young Africa Works in Kenya, TVET 02, Recognition of Prior Learning Project. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, team. Thank you for coming uh, to all the attendees. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Jorge Montoya. I'm the manager of business and operations for the International Development Institute. Uh, in this case, I'm the project manager for the TVET 02 project. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the TVET 02 project, you know, how we started, uh, funders, the partners, and the purpose of it. Uh, so the TVET 02 project is uh, funded by the MasterCard Foundation. You can see the logo in the, in the screen here. Uh, in cooperation with Colleges and Institutes Canada, CICAN. Hamburg is the project lead uh, with support from Northwest College in Alberta, in Alberta and Red River College in Manitoba. So it's like three colleges working together towards this uh, amazing project. Uh, our local partners are the Kenyan National Qualifications Authority, the KNQA, uh, and 26 centers of excellence. So if you think about a center of excellence to uh, equal to Canada or to Ontario, would be a, a college. It could be like um, Humber College, it could be uh, Fancha, Niagara, you know, one of those colleges. So we're helping 26 of those. The ultimate outcome of this project or the project goal is to give access to 10,000 uh, youth to RPL. And RPL is recognition of prior learning. Uh, so we're looking at 4,000 females and 6,000 males. Uh, the ultimate beneficiaries of this project will be the Juakali sector and the youth. Juakali is the informal sector. This is how they call it in Kenya. So Juakali, it's like hot sun. And the Juakali sector is the people that work out during the hot sun. That's how they call it in Kenya. Uh, so I'll talk to you a little bit about recent project activities, which you probably have seen uh, in the Humber uh, news, LinkedIn, and everywhere in social media. Uh, latest one, latest one is that we have uh, a capacity building exercise back in November 2022 uh, and where we engaged the 26 COEs in four different locations. So we divided in four different regions of Kenya and then we had a set of trainings going to these uh, regional trainings in recognition of prior learning, how to actually implement uh, recognition of prior learning from assessment, from counseling and advising, from application process and appeal process. Uh, so we train about 150 uh, teachers in four regions. Uh, and then how does this apply to the SDG? So we're working towards SDG number eight. Uh, in this case is decent work, uh, decent work and economic growth. 
Um, and why do you think we're supporting that number eight? Is because we're helping gap the lack of formal credentials from people that has been working in the Juakali sector uh, with giving them credentials, helping them to actually access those credentials, thus supporting them to access decent work, decent wages, and perhaps maybe government contracts or other engagements with the government uh, and then private and, uh, and uh, public uh, tenders. Uh, they have a lot of issues trying to access those. So once they get credentials, hopefully they'll, they'll be able to bridge that gap, have those credentials and then gain formal uh, credentials to actually apply for this type of work. Uh, the picture that you're seeing here uh, in, the, uh, in your screen uh, is in Nairobi. We were training, I think, about six, uh, six or seven uh, COEs. And uh, there was the KNQA team. It was an amazing experience. Uh, everyone really engaged. And what do we want to do? We want to promote, sustain, inclusive and sustainable economic growth full of and productive of employment and decent work for all. That's the that's the outcome of this of this project and really proud uh, to be part of this uh, Tibet O2 project and uh, the Hamburg community. Uh, that's everything I have. So back to you, Tiffany. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, like Jorge said, if you want to know more about Tibet O2, uh, you'll see a lot of our posts on social media. So again, give us a follow. Um, and if you want to know more about RPL, please check out our implementation partners website, uh, the Kenya National Qualifications Authority. So next up, we have Juanita, who will share about the B082, supporting the pilot implementation of a national network of digital fabrication laboratories in Peru project. Thank you, Tiv, and thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Juanita, and I am the project lead of supporting the pilot implementation of a national network of digital fabrication laboratories, or FabLab, in Peru. The program's length is 14 months, and it will end on March 31st. Um, this next month, uh, since it started in January 2022. The Canadian partners are the College Communitaire de New Brunswick, the Sejep Saint-Chen sur Richelieu, and Hammer College as the lead college. CI Can is also the founder and is also part of the Canadian Consortium. And the Peruvian partner is the, mini the Ministry of Education and 26 Institutes of Excellence, or well known as EDEX. These institutes were chosen by the Ministry and are located in each one of the 26 provinces all over Peru. Some of them are quite remote. And according to a ministerial resolution from 2017, an EDEX is characterized by its regional leadership and development of innovation and research. This project involves some SDGs such as inclusive and equitable edu quality edu education, gender equality, among others. However, we want to focus on the sustainable development goal number nine, which seeks to build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable in industrialization and foster innovation. So how do we foster innovation? Um, through training and one-on-one -on -one guidance with those 25 institutions, with teachers involved in fab labs or idea labs, and, to, and, and each institution developed an innovative project proposal. I want to say what is a fab lab, like, like some of you probably don't know. It is a digital fabrication laboratory. In Hamburg, we call, the, we call it Idea Lab. And it is a place where anyone can make almost anything using digital design through printers uh, or, or other technological means. But a fab lab is about turning ideas into reality. It's a place to learn for learning and innovation, providing stimulus for local entrepreneurship. In this project, we highlighted the importance of research for finding solutions to social and environmental challenges. We foster innovation into bringing new ideas, technology, and involving the community and the industry. As a result, well, even though we gave the same tools and same training to the institutions, we knew the outcomes were going to be different as each of the institutions had a different context. So each edX focused on the needs 
and on the different situation of the region. And we had amazing projects related to agriculture. For example, there is one edX promoting sustainability in rabbit consumption, which is a typical meat in the region. There were also some others that focused in pedagogy, also in security or in health, for example, bringing access to prosthesis to some of the people who were not, who didn't have the income to buy this. And there were many interesting projects that aim to enhance the quality of life in the regions through innovation. Um, well, we also have a website. Uh, there is a lot of information about this project there. So I encourage you to visit it. Um, and there's also some two minute videos. Some of them are in Spanish, but I, I challenge you to see them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juanita. Uh, like Juanita said, uh, one of the project deliverables was to create a website. So we do have that site where you can see updates, milestones, and again, watch the videos by our Peruvian partners. So thank you very much, Juanita. Um, up next, we have Vidushi, who will talk about the Empowerment Through Skills Training Program in Tanzania. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm Vidushi, uh, the project lead for the Empowerment Through Skills Program in Tanzania, which is a seven-year initiative with our partnership for four years, uh, starting this year, actually. This has been funded by the Government of Canada and implemented by Colleges and Institutes Canada in close collaboration with the Tanzanian uh, Ministry for Education, Science and Technology and the Department of Technical and Vocational Education and Training in Tanzania. Through this ESP04 partnership, Humber College, which is the lead partner, along with its uh, Canadian partners, College Communauté du Nouveau-Brunswick and Sijep saint jean sur richelieu are working with two folk development colleges in rural Tanzania to strengthen alternative pathways to education, employment, self-employment and entrepreneurship for women and adolescent girls. These folk development colleges are uniquely placed in the Tanzanian education system. They have no prior uh, education requirements for admission and offer short and long term programs in skill and trade based areas uh, with industry focused training to enable smooth transition into post education work. Over the next four years, we will be developing short courses, providing training in gender and human rights, life skills, technical and business skills, and self-empowerment and advocacy strategies um, to, to the colleges there. The theory of the project is that women and adolescent girls who have gone through training in these areas will have better access to jobs in the formal sector and higher productivity in the informal sector. We will also be working with two community-based organizations who will play a crucial role in our attempt to bridge the connection with community members, including leaders, parents, families, young boys and women, to address barriers and create a community of support. The project seeks to improve economic participation by women and adolescent girls in Tanzania, which is aligned with Canada's gender results framework, as well as SDG 10, reduce inequalities within and among countries. Inequalities based on gender have further been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, the effects of which have been reversing any positive trends of narrowing in income inequalities among a country. This threatens long-term social and economic development, harms poverty reduction efforts, and destroys people's sense of fulfillment and self-worth. Uh, through the project, what we aim to do is to encourage women's economic participation in the workforce, which we hope dri drives economic, which is which has evidence of driving economic growth while boosting the income of Tanzanian families. Increased income also leads to increased independence, which means greater financial security of women and their families, helping them exercise control over their lives, for females to attain autonomy and have a say in family decision making, delay the average age for pregnancies, enable safer pregnancies, pre and postnatal care, and address gender inequalities. The project is in its initial stages and activities are scheduled to begin in the next couple of months. So definitely watch out for potential opportunities to be involved. Thank you. Thank you, Vidushi. Like, uh, like Vidushi, Vidushi said, this is a newly launched project. So if you'd like to learn more, just read the Humber Today article. Uh, next up, we have our grant writing and communication specialist, Alex, who will talk about IDI's business development.
Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, like Tiffany said, I work in grant writing and strategic communications. Uh, so I work primarily at the beginning of projects versus a project lead who will be through the project with the design. So I wanted to start just by recapping what Nalini had said in the beginning about what international development is. So international development focusing on long term changes and innovative solutions to global and community challenges. So this is a bit different than other kinds of international assistance, including humanitarian aid, which might be something that comes to mind when you hear development and international. Uh, in humanitarian aid, that would be a quick response after a crisis versus an in international development. It's a longer term solution. I'm working uh, more to look at sustainable change, which is why it's tied so closely to the sustainable development goals. At Humber, it means it's a chance for staff, faculty, and students to use their technical expertise and I'll be able to connect it with international partners and apply it to real world, different contexts, uh, and be able to see some innovative changes. Um, we've seen a lot of different kinds of projects that IDI and Humber is currently engaged with, and I just wanted to break down a little bit about the different kinds of projects there are. No project is the same, all of them are a bit unique. Uh, and they can look like different things, which means different engagement from Humber faculty and staff. So, for example, we can have a project that looks at capacity building or technical training of staff, leadership and administration that might be happening at an NGO partnering organization or even a government agency. So that might be something like the Peruvian project that Juanita talked about or Tibeto 2 that Jorge talked about, because what Humber staff is doing is we're supporting the ability of the, the local partner to sustainably do a change in their community. Um, another kind of project we do is applied research, as we saw with the breastfeeding facility, um, and then using that what comes out of that to support evidence-based interventions in the future. Uh, or it might be more of an academic education focus, such as uh, program or curriculum development, uh, which is what we saw in STEEP. Uh, projects could be long or short term. Some of them might only be a year, some of them might be four or five years, uh, but this means that there's no one way for everyone to contribute or engage with a project. Um, it also means that that's not. Uh, there might be different tools involved depending on the need and the deliverable. Some might be using virtual tools, some might be a longer commitment that involves more physical interaction with their international partners. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind that these kinds of engagements, we want to focus on equal partnerships. So it's important that all of the engagements that Humber does is meaningful both to Humber participants and to our international organizations and partners. Uh, the second part I'm going to talk about is how these projects get funded. Primarily, we go through two different kinds of processes. One is through a call for proposals, meaning that the funder has provided guidelines and specific activities. When we see this kind of opportunity, we work with Humber staff and international partners to create a proposal based on those guidelines. Uh, another way is a bit more open ended. Um, one of our partners or Humber staff or faculty might notice a need or a challenge in their industry or community, and they already have an idea for what that kind of intervention might need that doesn't fit with a call that's currently out. So from there, we will look for uh, any kind of funding that might be available. Uh, from a funder that has the same priorities or interests in that specific area. And then we work with Humber staff and our international partners to develop and design a project for proposal. Uh, so hopefully that gives a bit more context to some of our projects, how they came to be, and then how we implement them in practice. Uh, if you have any more questions about IDI projects or international development in general and how to get involved, please feel free to reach out to anyone on the team for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, as Alex said, if you want any more information or would like to get involved, you can email us at internationaldevelopmentinstitute.humber.ca or anybody else on the team. Um, or you can also fill out our IDI roster form um, for future opportunities. So our next two speakers uh, will share about their intern experiences with IDI and working in IDI. So first up, we have Hazel who is our Monitoring and Evaluation Advisor. 
Thank you, Tiffany. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to attend today's session. I am Hazel, um, IDI's m &E advisor. So getting involved in IDI, um, I was taking up international development at Humber College and the director, Nalini, uh, who we met earlier, was one of our mentors. Uh, so as part of our curriculum, she encouraged us to get our resumes checked over the holidays and we sent them to her. Um, so I did that and she saw my background in monitoring and evaluation and then we talked about it. Um, she asked me about my experiences working in the Philippines and gave me an overview of IDI, uh, highlighting its projects in different regions of the world. Um, during that time, IDI was also looking for interns and she asked me if I'm interested to join. Um, so I said yes, and that's how I got myself involved at IDI. So um, during my internship, uh, we were finalizing two recently approved projects. Uh, I was involved in finalizing the project plans for the seed project in Kenya and the best project in Bhutan. Uh, so I helped the team starting from drafting the project implementation plans, focusing on the m &E components to having it approved by the donors and eventually uh, joining and implementing the baseline evaluations. Uh, so aside from these, I also reviewed m &E tools for the team and one was the online m &E platform that we are using right now. Uh, so ever since I joined the team, I had been helping find ways to incorporate a much more fitting m and &E into the projects that not only helps the project team learn about their contributions and successes, but also helps tell our story as the IDI team. Um, so as a newcomer to Canada, uh, working with IDI has helped me know more about the country and how it contributes to the welfare of the rest of the world. Uh, so I have been working in ID for quite some time now with experiences related to different thematic areas in the Philippines. And uh, back then, I thought that was enough number of years to be a so-called expert. But working for IDI took me back to my roots. So I learned how different working for the Canadian development organizations are compared to us back home. Uh, so coming, coming in with my experiences from a receiver country, it was exciting to see the intricacies of working from the donor country. So it gave me a new perspective of development. Um, it also helped that I am surrounded by familiar people such as my former classmates and professors, which is very helpful in adjusting to a new country. Uh, I've recently transitioned from an intern to a full-time staff, being IDI's m &E advisor, and I am applying the skills I learned from working in the Philippines to make sure we embody IDI's advocacy of creating an enabling and empowering environment for our partners. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hazel. Uh, next up, we have our operations intern, Lucia. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So my name is Maria Lucia. I am a student from the Bachelor of International Development. I got involved with IDI because I was interested in learning how Humber's international development worked, what uh, they did and their involvement in the development field, as well as the Canadian industry of development. So thankfully, an opportunity to intern at IDI arose while I was looking for my placement. So I applied and I was welcomed with open arms, kindness and patience. Everyone uh, has taught me so much. And I have had the opportunity to work in different projects, learn unique things from different regions of the world, issues they face, how we at IDI work, and more beyond what I originally expected. I have supported different projects, such as the Tivido 2 that Jorge talked about with Kenya and uh, the Peru project that Juanita talked about, where I learned a lot about communication and teamwork, as these projects have different partners with many ideas, busy schedules, and different time zones. While working in the Peru projects, I was able to further explore and exploit um, my skills on English and Spanish uh, in communication, in document translation, with different work etiquettes based on the cultures, and uh, kind of getting used to switching between the, the languages. Um, from working in the different projects, I have learned about different education tools and innovative ideas that I had never heard of before such as the Fab Labs and the edX projects presented in the Peru projects. It has been really, really rewarding for me to see what IDA has worked on and has accomplished so far uh, while supporting the different SDGs. And I honestly cannot wait to see what's next for, for IDA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucia. Um, that actually brings us to the end of our online session today. 
Um, as a reminder, to get involved, you can always email us. You can scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the chat um, to fill out the roster form. I want to thank everybody here today for joining us and attending the session. I'd also like to thank my team for speaking at the event today. And as a reminder, again, to follow us on social media to stay updated on our projects and any upcoming opportunities. Uh, so thank you so much, and I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day and has a great weekend. Tiffany, I have an idea. Why don't we have everyone open their cameras and we take a nice <laughs> picture before we all leave? Uh, and if okay. you have any questions, because uh, I think we still have a little bit of time in case people have yes. any questions, they can yes. come up with questions. It will be great. Yes, of course. Sorry, I forgot about that. I knew you were going to say that too for everyone to open their <laughs> camera. So let's take a group picture. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you want to unshare now, so we can uh, have yes. a bigger. Ah, maybe do two pictures. Yeah, one like with yeah. the thing and. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, if you so many to, people. Please turn on your camera. We'll take a big group picture. <laughs> wow. I think there's members of the audience that didn't weren't expecting us to ask them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Hey. <laughs> I haven't seen Holly like in two years already. Who else is here? Okay, cool oh, beans. Be careful, Jorge might call you out and tell you to turn on your camera. <laughs> yeah, Linda, please turn on your camera. <laughs> Linda Chow, if you're listening. Sophie, there's a bunch of family members here. It's so nice to see everyone. Sorry, cannot turn on the camera today. It's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the group picture. Uh, yes, OK, OK. Yeah. We still can yeah, see so your maybe... little picture there, so it's good. <laughs> I was just going to say maybe uh, as after we do the picture in the meantime, if if anyone has questions, because we have about 10 minutes uh, mm -hmm. left to the hours. So if you either want to type it in the chat or you want to raise your hands, you know, please, we'd be happy to take questions or comments. OK, who's going to take the picture? I was just going to ask. OK, I can take the picture. OK, OK, OK. okay. So you maybe. have to do like one, two, three cheese. So everyone will like. You know, so we don't look like okay. looking the other way. Okay. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Cheese. Perfect. I heard you have to say 66 and then it's easy. Like you, you'll be like smiling in all the pictures if you say 66. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but. We'll test that out next time. Yeah. <laughs> so if there are any questions, feel free to turn on your mic since a lot of us have our cameras on or even drop it in the chat. One at the question. time, please. One question at the time. Or a comment. It doesn't have to be a question. You can say, oh, you know, I really like this. No, there's a hand raise. Go ahead. John Santos, Patrick. yeah. You have John Santos too. Uh, Hi. Tiffany. Hi. Hi, John. Hello. Um. So what? You guys did a wonderful job with the projects, but I was I was wondering how the project ideas came to be like. I'm pretty sure there were other concepts that you guys were thinking about, but how did you. Choose the specific ones that, that were like carried out and all that. So I, sure uh, I'm sense. gonna I'm gonna give the uh, uh, Tiffany. You want to facilitate this piece, or do you want me to facilitate? Then I can start pointing to people. You want me to? It's up to you. Steve, oh, let you Jorge muted. Do it. You're let muted. Jorge You're do muted. it because he'll love that. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Ray. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna refer this question to Nalini Andrade, our director of International Development Institute. And uh, maybe perhaps Alex, between Alex and Nalini could answer that question. Thank you. Sure, thanks, Jorge. Um, I'll start I'll start off, John. <laughs> it's uh, I, 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 there's no uh, short way to say it, but then I'll hand it over to Alex uh, who could also explain. Um, maybe just to begin in terms of um, all our ideas uh, and concepts come from really what um, Humber is engaged in. 
uh, has engaged with in the past, lessons that we've learned, as well as what we're doing now, um, and also from our partners. So we're constantly in this process of exchanging ideas with our partners, exchanging ideas at Humber um, of what people are doing locally that we could implement globally. So taking local to global, but also global to local as well. Um, so that's sort of in, in, the, in the context of where these ideas come from. But um, the, the nature of when we pitch an idea is um, really focused on whether it's a call for proposal. So sometimes when the funder does a call for proposal, they specify um, the area of work, um, the countries or the regions where they expect the solution or the idea to be. Um, and sometimes as well, the type of solution they want it to be, or by knowing the background of the funder, we kind of have an idea of what sort of, um, you know, like what boxes we need to check in order for uh, our proposal to meet the funders' needs as well. So, uh, for example, the government of Canada uh, through Global Affairs Canada follows a feminist uh, approach to international development, hence the 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 uh, emphasis on on women and gender equality. So we know for projects related to government of Canada, uh, the project does have to have a focus, very high focus on gender equality, um, on environment, because that's another a priority on good governance. That's a third priority as well. Um, and then it depends on the on where they want the funding to go. So they'll say, you know, we want to put funding um, for education projects or health projects. Um, and so that that kind of becomes a broader context for us. Um, and, and so then maybe now I'll give it to Alex so Alex, you can then focus a little bit on the idea itself. Yeah, I can give two examples. So one is what Nalini was saying is that the funder is given requirements. So that would be our Tanzania project where CI can uh, had an opportunity and they had outlined a lot of things. For example, it was going to be at folk development colleges. It was going to focus on gender, uh, gender equality and empowerment of especially women in skills development and, and improving women's economic conditions. So looking at Humber's, uh, what we had in terms of technical expertise, we were able to match up with that opportunity and design a proposal based on what the funder wanted. Uh, but one that might be a bit more open, and you were talking about uh, what ideas get pitched and how do we narrow down an idea. We did a project last year called EDC Kenya, which was looking at, it was a one-year project pilot program for digital entrepreneurship for refugee women in Kenya. Uh, and the call for that specific proposal was very open. Uh, the requirements were, it was, I think, just a choice of country, and then it had to be a piloted innovative solution. Uh, so we had actually tried out several ideas, and then the one that uh, ended up being one, we had met with, we had a partner in Kenya who was already delivering skills. We met with several different staff and, and leadership at Humber to see what could we offer, what do we have, how can we work with our Kenyan partner to have something that would fulfill their needs and then provide a good benefit and also pilot an innovative idea. And that's where uh, through all of the conversations and consultations, putting it down to a concept note, which got submitted, uh, we got notes on that, which helped us then narrow the focus and design the project even further for a full proposal. So EDC Kenya was a project that finished last year, and I think we have some uh, resources from there that we can share maybe. Um, so you can kind of see, but that was definitely a project that had several different ideas and um, we did narrow it down in terms of feasibility, uh, the expertise available, and then the need in the country. So thank you for your question. And Thank you. And maybe I'll just end with for those of you here, if you if you have, um, you know, ideas or countries that you've engaged with, I just want to put it out there that we're always looking for ideas, uh, countries or regions. So like we're, we're in Kenya, Ethiopia and Tanzania, we're looking to scale across East Africa. Um, we if you know, we have a lot of French speaking partners from Canada, but we're always looking at, you know, for French speakers and multilingual, um, you know, uh, staff, faculty and students to engage. So we, you know, even if you don't want to engage directly, but you have an idea, we we'd love to hear from uh, from you. Um, and and you know, that's for example, in terms of uh, I just wanted to point out, it, you know, we 
we had a, a faculty member tell us about, you know, like the drone technology that he's using and, and teaching at Humber. And so now we're looking at how we can use drone technology to map out, you know, how, how far are schools from a location to talk about access or mapping out the environmental components of our project for environmental sustainability. You know, it could be something like that. Or in the case of STEEP, which Clarice presented, we're actually looking at ideas that um, community outreach, workforce development, you know, it, at local Etobicoke, as well as the, you know, FAST and FLA, what they're doing and, and ideas that we're doing in our local communities with refugee populations and how could we implement or get good practices to, to take to our projects internationally and vice versa. You know, now we're in Bhutan, which is doing great work in environmental sustainability. And we're looking at how we can capture these ideas to bring back to Humber. So maybe I'll just leave it there. Yeah, back to you, uh, Tiffany, and if there's anyone else who has a question. Are there any more questions? Feel free to turn on your mic, drop them in the chat. Tiffany, there's a question in the uh, in the chat box here uh, from uh, Tolu Wanini or Jessiku. It says, good day, please. I would like to know if there are virtual volunteering opportunities with IDI. Uh, that's one of the questions, so um, yeah. Please take it away, Jorge, Nalini. <laughs> I'm going to refer this question to Nalini too. <laughs> it's, back, it's back to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think, um, you know, the first the first step would be to definitely fill out the roster form so we understand skills. Um, everyone you you met here who spoke about their internship, internship experience has been virtual because we were two years into pandemic and our projects didn't stop. So all the results is across the two years. So whether it was the grant writing work or our project implementation, we did do it virtually. So, um, yes, the answer is yes, there are virtual opportunities. Opportunities in order to determine. Sometimes um, we actually have a need, and so we post and circulate it, um, you know, on student platforms. But there are other times that we get approached by students, like, or, or you know, I come across a student, for example, like Hazel, who has the skill, and I, you know, and we say, oh, you know, there might be an opportunity for you to do some work with us. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I think I think it answers the question uh, for uh, for Mr. Tolu Wanini uh, or Jusiku. So thank you for the question. Anyone else has any other questions before we before we miss? I'm sorry about that. I uh, apologize. Any anyone else has any questions or comments before we close it off? Well, even if you do, you know how to reach us, Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> you share yeah. the contacts. So, uh, yeah, so if you don't want to be put on the spot, please, you know, take your time, think about it. And uh, we're always happy to, to you know, meet for a, a virtual meeting. Um, we are also, I mean, I'm not in, in the Toronto area, but the others are. So if you want to have a coffee chat or, um, yeah, always happy to engage. Thank you for coming, everybody. Please feel, feel free to email us or fill out the roster. Um, thank you so much. I hope you learned a little bit more about us and our projects and then stay up to date with them as well. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.